All right, guys, uh, so in this video, I'm going to explain to you how the turn and play system works. So mine kind of looks bad uh, because of the animations. It's mostly the turn and place animations I'm using. Uh, so I'll explain that to you here in a minute. But getting started, I'm just going to come over here to this one and actually uh, I'll show you a video I'm going to make after this. So if you guys stay tuned, then I'll show you how to do this. And you'll see that it works fine. even if you start aiming while jumping. So anyway, let's get started. So there's a few things that you need to know about their setup inside of here on the character movement component before I take you over into the, and show you the rest of the stuff. So under no normal circumstances, uh, if if it's not, uh, let me just go ahead and show you. When we're when we're in this mode right here, this is the strafing mode. When we're in that mode, this is what we're using. And if we come over here, you'll see use controller, desired rotation, and orient rotation to movement. So it's important that you have your use controller desired rotation uh, set right here. And that your rotation rate is negative one. You'll see when we're falling though, uh, it's being set to 200. But when we're on the ground, it's set to negative one. So that's important to note. Also, they have use controller rotation yaw disabled right here. So you can read this tool tip right here. And uh, the reason why they're doing this right here, if, uh, the, if we set a negative value, then it gives us infinite rotation rate, which means that we instantly turn. Uh, that's going to be our target rotation. The thing that's going to keep our character from turning uh, with the capsule is right inside of here. It's our uh, offset root bone and our steering. So on the offset root bone, we have max rotation error set to negative one, which means we have no max rotation set. Uh, so it can rotate freely. It can rotate it freely as as it wants to. If you were to set that to 45, if the root became 45 degrees offset to the capsule component, then it would snap back. It, it would just it would snap back to uh, where the to where it's supposed to be, so it's aligned again with the capsule. And that's the reason why they set that to negative one and they're never clamping the rotation velocity. You can ignore the other stuff for now. So over here on our motion matching node, if you double click it, it'll open up this graph right here. And I'll go over this in another video. But uh, during normal circumstances, they're using this steering, but because they need to set this disable steering below speed to negative one, they have to uh, duplicate it. And that's the reason why right here, this one is being enabled and disabled based off of that turn in place tag from the currently selected database. So if we come back over here, and we come over here to this one right here, you'll see we're storing the selected database into a variable. We can't access anything off of it from in, inside of here because it's not thread safe. So on the event graph, 
uh, on the event graph. Right inside of here. No, it's under essential values. Update essential values right up here near the top somewhere or at the bottom. Okay. Right here at the bottom, we're uh, getting the tags from that database and we're storing them. And so if you go into the turn uh, database, post search database, and you look for tags, you'll see that they have this turn in place tag here, and that's how they're identifying it. So if the current database is the turn in place database, then we enable this steering right here. Um, I'm not going to go into the rest of this other stuff because it's not really that relevant to uh, this part of it. But it's important that the dis disable steering below speed is set to negative one because that means that we're, we're never going to disable uh, the steering um, un unless we're no longer in the turn in place database and then it'll be disabled. The procedural target time is the number of seconds in the future before we should reach the target orientation when uh, playing animations with no root motion rotation. They set that to an arbitrarily high value just to ensure that window is big enough for us to reach our target value, uh, our desired facing direction. I've gone over this in another video but I'll go ahead and do a refresher on this. What is this right here? It's just a reference to this uh, this piece right here. And so if you set a tag on it, and you right click and you search for that tag, it'll pull up a node reference. And there's a few functions that you can get off of this uh, to do various things. So that's what they're doing is they're getting the animation asset and the asset time and they're plugging it in here. I've already went over this in another video, so I'm not going to go into too much depth on it, but I just wanted to do a refresher. So that brings us to, let me just get this out of the way. That brings us to this right here. This is how they're, let me just exit out of that too. This is how they're determining from the chooser if we should go into the turn in place, if we should load the turn in place database. And that's under stand idles. That's it right there. And if we're falling, we can't enter the turn uh, place database. But if we're not falling and we should turn in place, then we will. You'll notice that there is an actual variable inside of here uh, called turn in place. It's actually a function. So if you select that function, there's three things you need in order to be able to access that function directly from here. Uh, and that is, it needs to be a pure function. It needs to be set to thread safe. And the output, you can only have one output and the output has to be labeled return value. All three of those conditions must be met. So you'll see that they're getting the character uh, transform rotation and that's just uh, the transform of this actor right here. Remember what we said, this is treated as the target rotation. If you read uh, this right here, it'll make more sense how uh, some of this stuff works. But I just wanted to do a quick overview on this. So they're getting the, oh, the root ro transform rotation. I need to go over this with you because you're, you're going to be confused as to what the root transform rotation is. You probably know what it is, but you don't know how it's uh, being calculated. So remember what I said about uh, anim node references? You just have to add a tag to it. So the off, offset root bone has a tag called offset root, and that's how they're getting the uh, root 
the offset root transform because they want to get it after they want to get it from the offset root uh, node here because if they don't if they get it from something before here or they get it from somewhere else it may not be the correct rotation so off of here they're adding 90 I've gone over this in a previous video but if you see this character right here if you remember we added a negative 90 degree rotation to it this counters that so that it's or so that this rotation is oriented properly otherwise it'll be 90 degrees off so they just correct the rotation there that's what they're doing and so they can get the delta which is the angle between the character's rotation where it's pointing and where the uh, mesh is actually facing and the absolute value of that if it's greater than or equal to 50 and the character wants to aim or uh, the current state is idle and the last state of the last frame was moving and what that means is basically that if you want to aim and the angle is greater than or equal to 50, then we will turn in place. Or if the angle is greater than or equal to 50 and we just entered idle, then we can turn in place. And I'll show you what that what that's like. So if if I aim, you'll see it's turning in place. And if I just shove in one direction and let go, just tap the key, you'll see he turns in place. See? Now there's one more thing that's really important that you need to know about this, guys. Uh, and that is, if I can, oh my god. Okay, yeah, I'm back. And that's the animation itself. So this is not the animation, this is a stop animation. Let me load up a turn and place animation. I'll go over the uh, why the Lyra stop animations don't work properly uh, with motion matching in another video. I've already figured it out. And it's basically the same reason why the Lyra turn and place animations also don't work properly. Uh, so it goes back to the, the way they did the animation itself. But if you look right here, we have an override continuing uh, pose cost of bias, which is reduced by negative one. And you'll notice that it extends the entire rotation of the character from the start to the stop of the rotation. And as soon as they start rotating, they do a post search block transition. And that's a little misleading because you think, okay, we're blocking a transition from this animation, but that's not the case. It's actually the opposite. When we enter this animation, when this animation first gets selected, anything within this range right here cannot be selected. It can't start off at frame 13. It has to start off at a frame between zero and five. That's what that means. And that prevents it from jumping into the animation halfway through or at, after it's already rotated, you see. So, yeah, so that's how that works. Another thing that's important for you to note, if you watch that arrow right there, hopefully you can see it good. As I scrub through this, you'll see the arrow stops rotating before the foot is is even completely on the ground. Uh, I guess it it, uh, it stops rotating fully right as that hill touches the ground. And then the left uh, the right foot comes up off the ground from where it was and moves into place. It's important that this animation is done like that because the Lyra ones are not, and so it can cause problems with the motion matching 
your root has to stop uh, before uh, before the animation does, or at least right at the same time that the animation stops. I'll go I'll go over into that more in a later video, but that's basically that's basically it, guys. So I'll see you in the next video. Uh, let's see. Let me actually see if I can pull up one of these turn in place. Let me see. That's a let me get a ninety. So let me just select this root bone here. And so you'll see that the root is the root is still rotating as after the left foot is firmly on the ground, the root is still rotating and the right foot is already in the air before the root bone stops. You see? And that's why inside of here, uh, the, the, those rotations look really funny. It looks like his foot is dragging. Uh, and the reason why is because with motion matching, you just have to do things a little differently. But yeah, I'll go over into that in more detail in another video.